think it's a really interesting moment to see can can it become more embedded societally for one but also then are there are there ways that it can infiltrate into the system so to speak and you know i've i've got my friend matt back up in in uh, washington is is trying to start a public you know he's been a public school teacher his whole career and trying to start something very learner centered in in a public school setting he's not there yet but he's made you know a lot of connections and and so he represents kind of a vanguard of sort of okay can this infiltrate into even the the mainstream to some degree and so i think that's really an interesting challenge i think that students and parents may try to demand more of this too and that yeah, may yeah. push it a certain direction well that, that's exactly the momentum that, that matt is trying to t kind of build on it's not just you know he got connected with uh, education reimagined and that's where i met him and and kind of got connected and said okay you know let's see how you can do this and so yeah it's, i think it's it's really interesting that so many parents realize things are not in, in fact there was one of the foundations put out a report recently basically you know big national representative sample kind of thing where 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 the overwhelming sensibility among parents is not what we've done before <laughs> they don't know what they want exactly but they know they don't want the mainstream what, model right right mm -hmm. and, and you know think about it culturally you've got this whole idea oh kids don't like to go to school they should they and so on and yet psychologically we know that kids are natural learners right and if you've ever watched a two-year-old, three-year-old, I mean, <laughs> they're insatiable. Oh, they yeah. want to learn everything they possibly can. And so if those two ideas don't seem to go together, except in the sense of looking at the fact that if the kids don't like school, something's wrong with their school. Right, exactly. Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's it's interesting because I, I, I think – like we're, we've been discussing, there's a lot of interest now. And right. like Jerry's saying, right, there's a, there's demand, uh, you, you know, like you pointed out, you know, parents are saying, well, I don't, I don't necessarily know what, but I know not this, right? Mm -hmm. I know this isn't working. And so I, so it's a really interesting time. I also been kind of keeping my eye on and been having conversations with others about, you know, it tends when things like this happens, you get tons of pop-ups, right? Tons right. of tons of new things pop up. And then after a while, those things sort of fade a little bit because for a number of reasons, mostly it's sustainability, right? But a lot of times it's because it's not based on solid philosophical ground or, you know, sometimes it's just like trying to take advantage of a wave mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's not necessarily, we don't necessarily really have this thought out maybe we just wanted to do it for a short while you know that that happens sometimes too Some, sometimes you know people get involved and they just want to be involved for a short time and that's okay mm -hmm. so really interesting to see in the next three five years you know where this is going to be and and mm -hmm. you know what's going to emerge because you know for a long while arrow was uh, you know if not the only one one of the few yeah. organizations that were were doing this and promoting and doing all this and now there's more you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. well, you know um, reality is going to affect this mm -hmm. the reality of being in the new millennium is that people need to be entrepreneurial they're going to need to be entrepreneurial to survive right it's, it can't be like oh you just plug into this field and then you're set for life everything changes people will be changing jobs jobs will be disappearing as right. they're replaced by other technologies and so on. So it's reality that's going to have an, a, a, a probably more effect on this than anything else. Yeah, the fact yeah. that in this millennium, we can't take the approach that people were taking 100 years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's really interesting. Kerry McDonald has been really focused on micro schools and, and sort of the entrepreneurial side of, of the opportunities to get things started. And so I think it's really 
you know, that, that, that that's landing in this space, in this alternative space in a new way, you know, because of the, the, these pop things that have now popped up just in the last few years. I mean, the things that I think were that, that are really taking off at this point are things that have a history pre pandemic and then pandemic hits. And then they were, were in a position to grow. And I, and I think that's an interesting uh, aspect of the whole of looking at looking at education as a market, not in a purely financial sense, but as a market in terms of of there's, you know, people looking at how things work. How do I get my kids? You know, I've got a job and I got to send my kids somewhere. You know, what's it going to be? Uh this is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Berg.